Hi there and welcome, I'm The Technician Project and today's tutorial is going to explain the layout of the channel strip in Logic Pro X. First of all, you're going to create a new project in Logic Pro X. We want to create an audio channel. We want to go to this little button at the top here to show the mixer or you can press X for the shortcut and the mixer has appeared at the bottom. We're just going to add another track in now, a software instrument track. The reason we're adding the software instrument track is it will show an audio track as audio one. It will also show the software instrument track and the buses it has been sent to to show a bit more of a layout within the mixer and the channel strips. And we're just going to go through the channel strips really quickly. So we've got the format button at the top. It will allow you to format the bus to tell you where you want to send it to. You've got the settings button. Use to load, browse or save the channel strip settings for the selected track. Which means you can input your channel strip into a different channel. You've got the game reduction meter. Now the game reduction meter displays the game reduction of the first compression plugin in the channel strip and then we've got the EQ display click to insert an EQ and it will show the first EQ displayed the next one we got is a MIDI effects slot and that will show the MIDI effects off the channel strip and then we've got the input instrument slot on the input slash instrument slot you can choose the channel strip input source the input source that's is your microphone or the instrument that you are connected to. You've got the audio effects slot. Is insert an audio effects into the channel strip. Use effects such as the EQ, the compressor, the reverb. Now, the audio effects slot works within series. So whatever the audio effects you input in first, that will be the first audio effects that will happen in the channel strip. It works down the channel strip. So if you've got an EQ, and then a chorus, then a compressor. That's how the channel strip will work. And then we've got send level meter. Um, the send level will send the level to the bus or to the channel or to the group on how much you want to send. You can send a full amount, a tiny amount. The send slot is the very similar to the send level. You can send it to the bus or the output or the submaster. You can create whatever you want to send it to. The output slot can be changed from a stereo output to uh, your bus outputs, for example, or no outputs if you don't want to hear the track. The group slot is to show what you've put in your groups. So you can group the drums together and you can name the group drums and you can see that that's in the group slot. The automation modes, you can change from read, write, latch, touch, and that will help read the automation throughout the performance. The pan pot allows you to pan where you want your instrument or effects to pan to. The peak level display shows whether if, if you ever your track's peaked or not. And if it has, you can turn it down using the volume fader. The volume fader is just the level of the volume of what your instrument is coming out as. The level meter will show how loud your instrument is, so you can then adjust the volume fader to adjust the peak level. And then the next one is input monitoring. Input monitoring is allows you to hear the incoming audio on the audio track that isn't armed for recording. You can set the levels or practice parts before recording. Uh, record enable button is pretty simple. It allows you to arm the track ready for recording. They got the little bounce button here. Allows you to bounce the whole project out as one. You got the mute and solo buttons, M and S, allows you to mute and solo your project. If you enjoyed the video today, please leave a like rating and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching and see you next time.